Ang topic natin for today's video ay anong gagawin sa mga losing stocks? Benta na ba or hold lang? Maski gaano ka kagaling or ka-experienced na investor, there will be times na may bibilhin kang stock tapos babagsak ang share price. And minsan, babagsak pa ang share price way below your average price. And this happens to everyone. Ganon talaga sa stock market investing. Kasama ito sa risk. Hindi 100% na panalo ka. As an investor, wala tayong way para malaman kung saan pupunta ang share price na may stocks in the short term. Sa short term, ang stock prices are driven by emotions, news, and sometimes meron ding manipulation na nagaganap. At hindi nito nire-reflect ang actual value ng business. Pag nag-invest ako sa mga companies na ginawan ko ng research at pasado sa criteria based sa piece analysis na itinuro ko dito sa aking YouTube channel, maski bumaba ang share price ng aking stocks, I trust na hindi sila bad investment. It's just that they haven't had the time to realize their full potential. So lahat tayo makakaranas ng losing stocks minsan. But the important question is, how do we deal with this situation? Pag meron kang losing stocks, take a moment to assess the situation. Ask yourself these questions. So number one, what has changed about the company? Number two, are the fundamentals still strong? Number three, what is the reason for the stocks decline? Importante, ma-differentiate mo yung temporary market fluctuations and serious underlying issues ng company. So for these companies, kung bumaba ang share price, even way below sa buy price ko, hindi ako mag-worry. Alam ko that the share price drop ay temporary lang. So I consider short-term weakness as an opportunity to buy more shares. Meron na akong video about stock screening and analysis Itinuro ko dito ang piece analysis na natutunan ko sa Value Investing College sa Singapore. So you will know if companies are great or not before you buy them. Paano mo malalaman kung ang investment mo has turned bad at kailangan mo nang ibenta? Halimbawa, tuloy-tuloy ang pagbaba ng share price. Should you buy more shares and mag-average down or mag-cut loss na lang? Ang sagot ay, it all depends on the reasons why the price is going down. Merong mga non-company specific reasons. Yun ang pagbagsak ng share price ay walang kinalaman sa company. Examples, bear market and correction. Pag bear market, lahat bagsak. Bumabagsak ang share price by 20% or more. And then pwedeng abutin ng years. Pag market correction naman, shorter siya versus bear market. And smaller ang price drop, around 10% or more. Gaya ng nangyari recently, after magliparan ang karamihan ng stocks, so nagkaroon ng correction. A correction is a natural part of the market cycle kasi it helps the stock prices adjust back to fair levels after rising too quickly. Both are normal parts of stock market investing. Mas mahaba nga lang ang bear market and it's more severe than market correction. So another non-company specific reason ay macroeconomic and geopolitical reasons. Gaya ng global pandemic, recession, inflation, interest rate change, political instability, etc. Next is sector rotation. This is when money flows between sectors. Another one is industry-specific news that affects the entire industry. So example, yung office REITs last year. So merong news na nagkaroon ng oversupply na ang mga REITs. Kaya bumaba ang share price ng mga office REITs. This type of oversupply affects the real estate or REIT market segment. Hindi ito due to the performance of the company. While individual REITs may be affected, the root cause is external and it affects the entire sector. So hindi siya specific to the company. Meron ding company-specific reasons bakit bumababa ang share price. Gaya ng missed earnings estimate. 
For example, yung AEV, nag-report ng earnings na hindi umabot sa expectations ng mga analyst or below forecast. Investors might view the company as underperforming relative to market forecast. As a result, pwedeng bumaba ang share price due to decreased confidence ng mga investors in its future growth or profitability. Pag ang missed earnings is a one-off event, And the company meron naman siyang clear explanation bakit such as temporary issues or external factors that are expected to improve, pwedeng mag-recover ang stock price. So pag ganitong situation, I take it as an opportunity to buy shares. Pero if a company keeps missing its earnings, pwedeng may malaking problema ang company. Red flag na. So, this can cause the stock price to keep going down because shareholders will start to think that the company isn't doing well. Next is lower forward guidance. This refers to a company adjusting its future earnings expectation. So, binababa. For example, if a company like DMC, so previously expected to earn a certain amount in the next quarter or year, And then, ni-revise ang estimate sa mas mababa due to weaker conditions. It is lowering forward guidance. So, this signals the investors na hindi optimistic ang company about its near-term performance. So, pwedeng bumaba rin ang share price. Lowering forward guidance ay very common, especially pag ang economic conditions or industry-specific challenges affect a company's outlook. Great companies also go through good and bad quarters. Next naman is temporary bad news. Good companies also get hit by bad news. Example dito yung plus. Biglang bumagsak ang share price noong September. Ito nung time na nag-announce ng ban sa mga bogos. May balita na kasama ang mga online gaming sa ban. Kaya natakot syempre yung mga ibang investors kaya nagkaroon ng sell-off. Pero nakarecover din naman agad ang share price. Pero pag ang news ay about company scandal, merong accusation of financial fraud. So get out immediately. Sell na agad. Huwag na magdalawang isip. So when to consider selling? Unang-una, fundamentals deterioration. Pag yung company's earnings are consistently declining, palaki ng palaki ang utang, Negative ang operating and free cash flows or merong signs of mismanagement. So, it's time to sell na and cut your losses. Another reason is if the company's economic mode ay nagdeteriorate and natalo na ng competition. So, it's time to sell. Share ko lang yung experience ko sa DDMPR. Meron akong small position sa DDMPR. So, bumili ako ng DDMPR last year around August. Maganda pa ang earnings ng DDMPR that time kasi tumaas ang annual 2022 earnings niya. And then, second quarter and third quarter ng 2023 ay okay pa. Pero yung annual 2023 earnings ay bumaba na. And then, yun, nag-declining din ang earnings ng 2024. And then yung share price niya nagde-decline. Feeling ko parang walang pakialam ang DDMPR sa mga shareholders. Kasi yung investors relation sa website ng DDMPR hindi updated. Yung website talaga nila hindi updated. Walang mga bagong assets infusion, declining ang occupancy rate, declining ang dividends, and then tapos na ban pa yung mga pogos. Kaya lalong bumaba ang share price. So, para sa akin, hindi na siya good investment. Buti na lang, maliit lang ang position ko sa DDMPR at nakareceive na rin ako ng mga dividends. So, I decided to cut loss and nilipat ko sa ibang stock kung saan mas malakas ang conviction ko. Sa case naman ng Nickel Asia and Wilcon, nag-decline ang earnings but they are not losing money. They're still profitable. Maganda rin ang balance sheet, ang baba ng utang, But the share price has hit a low point. Hindi naman sila bad businesses. It's just that they are making money slowly than before due to some challenges. 
Both companies, I think, are cyclical. Nickel Asia is affected by nickel demand, while Wilcon naman is tied to local economic conditions and the construction market. Wala kong hawak na nickel and Wilcon, pero kung may hawak ako, hold ko lang and wait for a higher price to sell. Pero pwedeng mag-turn around naman yung tong dalawang companies na ito. Profitable pa rin sila, good pa rin naman yung business nila. Pag nag-turn around ang dalawang companies na ito, hold lang and maybe consider adding more shares pag nagtuloy-tuloy ang kanila magandang performance. So, kailangan lang ng patience. Si Nicole, merong dividend. Si Wilcon naman, meron din pero mababa lang. Remember, even in the long run, not every stock you pick will be a winner.